What's up baseball players, Coach Dan here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about JUCO baseball and whether or not this would be a good fit for you on the recruiting trail. All right, so if you're new to my channel, I'm Coach Dan Blewett, I'm a former pro pitcher. Uh, I have tons of videos on this channel, which you can subscribe to below. You can see links to all my other resources below. You know, I've got mental training stuff, pitching stuff, um, lots of high level baseball strategy and knowledge. So thanks for being here. So number one, um, Juco baseball, I think is getting more press than ever, obviously because of social media and because of Twitter. And there's, and this is great that it's sort of being destigmatized. You know, I think a lot of parents and players feel like if they don't go D1, their son's a failure, which is absolutely not the case. And it's an accomplishment to play any level of college baseball. And it's also a great extension to, you know, your childhood pastime. Um, that said, Juco baseball is going to be right for some people. It's not going to be right for others. Um, so let's go through a couple reasons that Juco baseball might be right for you. All right. So reason number one, it's obviously huge for players who need more time to develop. So story about me, I was 78 to 81, touching 83 as a high school senior. And uh, I sort of had a family friend who made a call for me and I ended up getting a recruited walk on spot at a small division one in Maryland. Had that not happened, which had I had not not had that personal connection and, you know, I was good enough to play there, I suppose, with no scholarship. Um, my only other route was going to be junior college. Now, what I later figured out was that I was a pretty late bloomer. So that next year, just 12 months later, instead of being 78 to 81, touching 83, I was 84 to 87 by the end of my freshman year. So if I had gone the JUCO route after that freshman year, I'd have been in pretty good shape. That's obviously especially good velocity for back at, you know, being 2005. Um, and then my, at the end of my sophomore year, I was 86 to 89. So I was a, a classic example of a player who really bloomed in those first two years physically, where I probably would have been able to transfer to another probably good division one. Hopefully at that point, you can never tell, you know, what your path would have been. But either way, I put on a lot of velocity, put on a lot of weight. Uh, it was a really good developmental two years for me. So if you're one of those players who's not real big, not real strong, and you haven't gotten the offers that you really want, so say you really do want to play Division One baseball, and your only offers have been D3 and a bunch of junior colleges, well, you could go D3 and play four years there, or you could try JUCO baseball and potentially develop and then leapfrog to the Division One program you know, that you hoped to get out of high school. So that's a great route for players who need to be, they just need more time in the oven, essentially, right? They're just not fully baked yet. And uh, they just need more time to put on mass, develop, get more powerful, throw harder, et cetera. All right, so reason number two, junior colleges are a lot cheaper. So the college degree these days is worth less than it ever has been. And it's more expensive than it ever has been, right? Having a bachelor's degree in a college is a lot just like having a high school diploma. It's clearly not the same as a high school diploma. College graduates earn more money significantly, uh, but at the same time, they also leave college with potentially a hundred or $200,000 in debt, depending on where you go. So it's important to weigh the options of how much should I really spend on my four year university. And if you go two years in junior college and then transfer to a four year school, when you graduate from that four year school, it doesn't say, you know, um, District of Columbia State, plus, you know, American University, it just says American University, whatever you finish from in your four year school is the diploma that you get. So those two years where you saved a lot of money going to a junior college is going to have no bearing on the degree you ultimately get, which is great. So you basically just get a huge discount on the same four year degree. And remember, even though everyone has pro baseball aspirations, the reality is, as those NCAA commercials say, that everyone, pretty much everyone is going to go pro in something other than sports. So when you do enter the real world, it's really nice to enter the real world with either no debt or minimal debt because you maybe spend a couple years at a junior college. So reason number three that a JUCO might be good for you uh, is if your academics weren't that great. So obviously a lot of people don't like school. I hated school. High school sucked. I just I was not a fan of sitting in class, right? A lot of it was boring. Like I'm learning about you know, hieroglyphics and all this random stuff. A lot of human history is interesting. Some of it's really boring. Some teachers are really amazing. Some teachers are really terrible, right? School is a, is a mixed bag. So if you're not a huge fan of school and you haven't performed particularly well, then junior college might be your only route. The standards in the NCAA to be eligible for a lot of uh, division one programs are actually getting higher and higher every year because baseball players were not graduating 
uh, at a, even a reasonable clip for a long time. So they really crack down academic standards. So if you have a low SAT score and a, and a kind of poor GPA, you might not be eligible to play D1 baseball or D, even D2 baseball or the school that you really want to go to long term. You're just like not quite there yet. So if you need to fix your academic record, then junior college is going to be the place to do that. Where you can go there, focus more on your on your studies, you know, maybe mature a little bit if that's part of the issue, you know, and then go forward after that and transfer and everything's patched up. But if you do have that rough academic track record, junior college might be a the only fit or be just a really good fit in general. Reason number four, some players just aren't that mature where they're really ready to go off to a four year school where they're away from mom and dad and they have all this autonomy of a big school where there's 40,000 other students and they can make all the good or bad decisions that they want and no one's telling them to go to class, no one's telling them to, you know, to get in line, act straight, all that stuff. There are some, a lot of athletes, I shouldn't say some, there are a lot of athletes who are just not mature enough to handle the college experience yet. That's not just athletes, it's all students in general. There's a percentage of the college population that drops out every year, or they flunk out every year, or they, they drink themselves out every year, right? That stuff happens. So I know some parents personally who said, you know what, my kid's just not ready for a big, big time school yet. And we're going to hold him, we're going to encourage him to go to junior college, or, or, or we're only going to pay for junior college. That's been our sort of family choice, given some of the choices that they've made in high school. Um, about going to class and, you know, doing well in the, in the classroom and all that sort of stuff. So that's another thing. It's kind of like a stepping stone where most junior colleges that players will attend will be close to home and a lot of those players will live at home. So it can be that stepping stone for players who aren't mature enough to really handle the big time college experience yet. And that's OK. Right. I mean, we, I think in society we expect 18 year old kids to suddenly just like, oh, see you later. You've had no experience living in the real world and making your own food and you know dealing with peer pressure and, and doing all these things and making a really organized schedule. Baseball and a uh, class schedule in college is a really big workload. It is not easy, especially for baseball. It's by far the worst sport because you play 56 games in the spring and you practice every day in the fall. It's really rigorous schedule and some people are just not ready for it. So if that's you, uh, parents, if I'm speaking to you and that's maybe your son, it's a very real conversation. You don't want to send them off and have them come right back because they didn't go to class. They flunked out. They got in trouble, whatever it is. Um, so it's just a family decision that you might have to potentially make. All right. So the next couple of things, let's talk a little bit about the quality of junior college baseball. So how good is Juco baseball? Well, it varies widely. I took issue with a tweet uh, on Twitter a little while ago, a couple of months ago, you know, person's like, Juco is the best experience ever. You know, there's so much great, you know, we're using all this great technology at our school and helping players. Well, it's like, that's wonderful. There are some division, or there are some junior college baseball teams that will beat a lot of D1 teams. There are some really, really talented junior college teams. And no surprise, a lot of those really talented teams have a lot of resources and some really good coaches. And they've got the money to have a lot of the fancy technology and great facilities and you know, all the bells and whistles to really help develop athletes. And that's true, but that is not indicative of the experience as a whole. By far among the college levels, the most financial resources and thus coaching resources because they can pay coaches more, the best weight rooms, they have strength coaches, they all belong to D1 programs. So if you want to say who has the most good facilities by level, it's for sure the division ones because they have football money, they have lots of, of funding. Division two, there are still some schools that are powerhouses that have great facilities, but there's lesser of them than D1. And the same thing with D3, and then the same thing with junior college. There's just not as much money allocated to community college baseball uh, because obviously, you know, the tuition fees are so low. The schools are smaller. They don't they don't need to bill out a football weight room. They don't have they don't have the the resources to pay, you know, a world class strength coach like you know the University of Iowa might have, for example, or the University of um, you know, Connecticut, like you go to one of these big name brand schools, they've got big name brand facilities and, and coaches to match. So there are certainly some amazing facilities and some amazing coaches at all levels of college baseball, but the spectrum is huge. So don't say I'm going Juco. It's going to be amazing. There are some Juco teams that have garbage coaches that have garbage fields that have garbage weight rooms, and they are absolutely terrible. I've watched some junior college baseball that makes me cringe. I've also watched again some. I had a, a, a coach, a friend of mine who I played with. He coached at uh, San Jacinto Junior College in Texas, and they had like nine pitchers on their staff throwing 90 plus. Like they were amazing. And San Jacinto is a perennial winner, um, one of the few junior colleges that I, I have a connection to. Um, 
and so there again there's just a huge spectrum i mean that's like comparing you know vanderbilt to like the number 300 uh, d1 team so you have to do your research don't just say junior college baseball as if it's one uniform product because it's not there are some again there's some great teams really talented amazing facilities amazing coaches and there are some teams that are embarrassing that a really good high school team would probably beat i've seen both sides of the spectrum and that's a realistic view so you have to really do your homework and figure out which one is going to be right for you the last thing i want to mention this is by no means a, a total guide i did write a really long thorough guide on juco baseball so i'll put that in the link in the description below so if you want to read that article uh, definitely click in the description when you're done watching here but the last thing i want to mention here is that you know juco baseball can be a great route to transfer to a really good school but can also be tough sometimes depending on the coach and all that stuff so you need to do your homework figuring out will this coach go to bat for me and really try to get me out there for recruiting because one of the downsides about going to a two-year school is that you have to transfer again and that means so the recruiting process essentially starts a second time so if your coach at the junior college level doesn't seem to send lots of players off to four-year schools that should be a red flag to you you should look in, and if you go on a visit to a junior college you should say hey you know how many players have you sent to whatever level it is that you want to play at or you know how many how many kids have you sent to the sec or the acc or the 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 missouri the missouri valley conference whatever it is whatever the local school is wherever you feel like your your goal is look at that school if you look at their track record and they their track record and they've sent tons of players to d2 and d3 schools but very few players to d1s and your absolute goal is to play d1 baseball that should be a red flag to you not to say that's a knock on the coach because sometimes he just doesn't have d1 talent and that's okay too um, but when there's not a lot of d1 talent coming from a junior college there might be a reason that hey maybe the scouts aren't really flocking down there and maybe the the school just isn't churning out d1 ball players so there's all those different factors to consider and you should really do your homework and research you know what are the coaching staff like what's the facilities like has the program been growing has it been winning over time has it been increasing and lastly the one thing to consider is that most community college and, and, and junior college are in very small towns so if you're not going to one that's really local to you say you're just looking overall in your state to find the best junior college fit there are going to be some schools in some in some pretty tiny towns and you have to ask yourself is that what i want do i want to go to a uh my spend two of my four years in college at a really tiny town somewhere is that the kind of lifestyle that i want is that the student experience that i want and the academic experience that i want a lot of four-year schools offer this really big fun you know exciting environment often in bigger towns you know a lot of times in smaller towns too um you know so you have to weigh all those pros and cons too but again junior college baseball can be a great experience for some and not quite the right fit for others um and so you need to just figure out what are your goals long term where what kind of level of baseball do you want to play at and would junior college be a good stepping stone for you academically and athletically all right so thanks for watching again i'm coach dan blewett if you're new here check out my strength program below there's links to try it for free there's lots more resources my newsletter my books all that stuff in the description video please subscribe share this with a friend and i will see you in the next video